everyone, my name's Arjun, and today I'm going to be showing you guys 12 ways to win a game of chess in 12 moves or less. Let's get on to the first game. This first game was played between Johannes Zuckertort and Adolf Anderson. And you may have heard the name Zuckertort since he, the, name, the, the opening knight f3 is often called the Zuckertort opening. At least it is when you follow it, when it starts with d4, d5, knight f3. This is known as the Zuckertort opening. So this game was played between Zuckertort, as I mentioned, against Adolf Anderson, who was also once a very strong player. The game started like this. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, so the Roy Lopez. Anderson chose to play the move knight g to e7. And this is not a very popular move. Probably the most popular move in this position is to play the move a6, which is essentially just the main line of the Roy Lopez. But knight g7 is not bad. White played the move c3. He's intending to play d4, and this would help him gain control of a big center. And now black played d6, so d4. And this move has the threat of g5. And since this bishop is pinning the knight, it could potentially win this knight on c6. Black plays the move bishop d7, breaking the pin, and now white just castles. Black plays knight g6, and now the e7 squared is freed up, so now he can play bishop e7 and castle, potentially, in the next few moves. Knight g5 is played, and this is not a great move, but what Zugertort wants to do is he wants to play queen f3, bishop c4, and target this f7 pawn, which is generally a weak point. Black played the move h6, asking knight's, wh white's knight to go away, and now white played a slightly dubious move. He should just retreat his knight, and of course, if you look at the position a few moves ago, you'll notice that the position is pretty much exactly the same, meaning that if he played knight f3, white hadn't really accomplished much over the last few moves. But instead, white played the slightly dubious move knight takes f7. After king takes f7, of course, white played the move bishop c4. And now black has a few options. He can play king to e8, king to e7, pawn to d5, or bishop to e6. And there's only one of those moves that will leave black with an advantage. If he plays d5, of course, then white will just take a free pawn. So that can't be good. After this, black will have three options, bishop e6, king e7, and king e8, which were all present in the original position. So obviously d5 can't be a good move. If he plays instead bishop to e6, now white can win a piece using the pawn fork d5. What this fork does is it attacks a bishop and knight, and you can't save both of them. The best move for black in this position is actually to just play king g8, letting white have his pick of which piece. But be aware, if d takes c6 winning the knight, then you lose your bishop in return. So white should just play d takes e6, and he'll be much better because of a safer king, a great pawn on e6, and this bishop that's on the same line as the black king. So clearly bishop e6 isn't a good move. In the game, black played the move king e7, and now white is actually completely winning. But before we do that, let's take a look at the move king e8. If king e8, white might do what he ended up doing in the game, queen h5. After queen h5, the knight is attacked, of course, and the only way of defending it is to play queen f6. And now, after this move, White can play something like f4, trying to attack. He's, he has his rook on the same line as the queen, and now he's got a double attack on this e5 pawn. On top of that, White also has the threat of f5. But what black should just do is he should play something like e takes d4, and after f5, he can play something like knight e5, and he is slightly better. But that's not what happened in the game. Instead, Anderson played the move king e7. And after this move, white has a really nice tactic, but can you see what it is? I'll give you a moment. Pause the video if you need more time. The move that white played is queen to h5, like I said before. But now black actually is just losing. There are only two ways of even trying to protect this knight, and those are king f6 and queen e8. Not to mention bishop e8. If king f6, this move actually obviously looks bad, because it's placing the king on the same file as this rook, and it's moving it closer to the center, generally something you don't want to do early on in the game. White should just play a move like f4 here, 
And if black plays something like e takes f4, then you can just take with the bishop. And now white will be mating in a few moves due to these discovered attacks with the bishop. Instead, if black plays e takes d4, then white can play a move like e5, trying to, block, trying to open up lines. If d takes e5, then f takes e5, and after king e7, bishop g5, mate is soon to follow. Instead, if king e7 is played, what white should do is he should just take on d6. And now, because of these active pieces, sorry, not that pawn, the bishop, the queen, and the rook, mate will soon be delivered. So clearly, king f6 is not the way to go for black. Instead, he could try bishop to e8. However, the problem with this is similar to what happened in the game. White can play something like bishop to g5. And now, black only has a few options. If he plays king d7, white has a sneaky mate in one. It's probably not the first thing you're going to look at, but it is queen g4. This is checkmate, and so is queen h3. And, of course, if you take the bishop instead, then white has forced mate. Checkmate. So bishop e8 is also not a good move. The last option is what Anderson played in the game, and that is the move queen e8. Queen e8, black, white has two different ways to checkmate in two. I'm going to challenge you to find them. Pause the video if you need more time. I'm going to show the move now. In the game, Anderson, or not Anderson, Zuckertort played probably the cooler looking move, queen to g5 check. And now, after black's only legal move, bishop takes g5 as checkmate. However, instead of queen to g5, he could have also played bishop g5. But I personally think it's cooler to sacrifice a queen rather than a bishop. And of course, h6 g5, queen g5 mate. On to the second game. The second game was played between Hikaru Nakamura, he's one of the world's best players, against Evgeny Bareev. Nakamura had black. Bareev started the game with knight f3, d5, d4, c6, bishop f4, queen b6. So far, Nakamura is playing some strange moves. You generally don't see grandmasters play d5, c6, and queen b6 on the first three moves. Bareev played the move b3, protecting his b-pawn. Knight f6, e3, knight h5. So black is attacking this bishop on f4. And since this bishop has a good, uh, not the knight, sorry, the bishop has a good diagonal, uh, black obviously would like to trade it off. So he plays the move bishop g5, trying to not trade his bishop. And after the move h6, bishop h4, knight d7, he plays a slightly strange move and also slightly dubious move, knight e5. Now this move might seem strange at first, because after knight takes e5, and if, black play, if white plays d takes e5, here's a simple tactic. The move is queen b4 here. It forks the, the bishop and the king. Instead of playing d takes e5, Bareev intended to play queen takes h5, recapturing the knight this way. And this ends up being what happened in the game. Now, black played the move knight to g4. And now you'll notice that the queen's diagonal here is now blocked. And actually, the queen has no, no squares it can move to without being captured. This square is protected by the bishop. This square is protected by the pawn. This is protected by the pawn. This is protected by the king. Protected by the bishop. And protected by the knight. So if black can just attack white's queen without giving away control of any of the other squares, then he'll win black's queen for free. So white played the move bishop to g3, and what he intended to do here was free up these squares. But this is actually a blunder. White had only one way to try and survive, and that was to play bishop to d3. Now, if black played a move like g6, which is his th original threat, white can play bishop takes, e6, bishop takes g6. And in this position, black is still slightly better just because he's up material, but white is not losing by any means. However, instead of that, as I said before, white played the move bishop to g3. And now black has a pretty cool way of winning the queen. Can you find it? The first move is relatively simple. It's to play g6. And if you play queen h3 as black, uh, as white, sorry,
then you actually can win the queen as black. And that is by playing the move knight takes e3. You'll notice that this is a discovered attack on the queen. And the only way for white to save his queen any longer is to play queen h4. But after this move, the easiest way for black to just win is to play something like knight takes e2, king d2, and just take the free rook. There are better ways, but this is the easiest. Up a, pe up a rook and a few pawns should be easily winning. So because of that line, Barayev instead played the move queen to h4. And now here comes the real tactic for black. It's a bit of a quiet move, so it's kind of hard to find. I'll give you a few seconds. Pause the video if you need more time. The move that black played here is bishop g7. And this move is actually so strong that white just resigned here. Now, now that might make you ask, well, why is that such a good move? You'll see why in a second. Black is starting to play bishop to f6. So, for example, if white plays some nothing move like a3, bishop f6 threatens the queen. The only move for the queen to, the only place that the queen can go is h3. And now, after knight takes e3, instead of just winning the rook, after knight takes e2, knight takes a1, things are even worse for white. Since now, not only does, is, the, is, the, is white going to lose the rook, he's also going to lose his queen, because all the queen squares are actually taken up. So that might make you ask, well, can, can white stop the threat of bishop f6? And the answer is technically no. The closest he can come to doing that is to play bishop e5. But the problem is, now white will take on, black will take on e5, and after recapturing, bishop takes e5, First of all, the rook is being threatened, and if white plays something like c3, the only way of blocking this diagonal, black can just play a move like queen to c5. Now he's double attacking this pawn, and the only way for, for, black, for white to protect the pawn is to play king d2. And clearly, after a move like, for example, castles, white is not in good shape. Because of the following moves, white resigned after bishop e7 because he sensed what was lying in his future. This third game was played between Gary Kasparov against Guy West. Kasparov started off with e4, c5, knight f3, and knight f6. So this is a bit of an offbeat line. More popular moves include d6, knight c6, and e6. But knight f6 was played and after the move knight to c3, black played e6. And now this is looking much more like a mainline Sicilian. White played d4, transposing into the open variation. Takes, takes, and bishop b4. Now white, now black has a threat of knight takes e4 since this knight is pinned. White, white plays the move e5, and after knight d5, he's double attacking this pinned knight. What white chose to do is to play bishop d2 now. So now he's double protecting this pin knight with his pawn and his bishop. Black took on c3 and white took back with the pawn. Since now that the bishop has to move somewhere, he'll have an extra tempo. That is, he'll have gained time relative to his opponent. After this move, black chose to play bishop f8. And after bishop d3, d6, white played the move queen e2. Now black played the very natural looking move, knight to d7, but this move completely loses. Can you see why? I'll give you a moment. The winning move for white is to play knight takes e6, and this is actually the only move that gives white the advantage. If f takes e6 is played, the most natural move of course, then white can play the move queen to h5. If pawn g6 is played, the most natural way of blocking the of blocking the queen, you can play bishop takes g6. Now, if h takes g6, then queen takes g6, king e7, bishop g5, and the queen will soon be lost. The same can be said if king e7. After bishop g5, although the queen is not going to be lost anytime soon, it, it is lost after this next tactic, queen h4. So, seeing all of these dangers, black's, uh, white's opponent did not play that move. 
Instead, he, cho he chose to play the move queen b6, because if the queen moved to any other place, then knight c7 would win the rook. Queen a5 is also an option. But queen b6 is played, and now after the move knight to c7, black simply resigned. Can you find why? I'll give you a second. The reason why black resigned in this position is because after the move queen takes c7, e takes g6 is a discovered check, and it therefore wins the queen. After king d8, white will be up a lot of material, and because of this, black chose to resign on move 12. This fourth game is played between two very strong players, Robert James Fisher, also known as Bobby Fisher, against Reuben Fine. Fisher had white in this game. He started off with e4, c5, knight f3, d6. So the Philidor defense. d4, and now he plays knight d7, which is a slightly dubious move, not losing or anything, but more com more, a more popular move is to play e takes d4. And this is the main line of the Philidor. But knight d7 was played, and Fisher chose to play bishop c4. Now, Black plays the move c6, and the idea of this move is because he wants to play d5 and try and gain control of the center as well as push the bishop back. Of course, the move d5 is not possible at the moment, considering that white has two attackers on that square, but that's just an idea for black to keep in mind. White castles. Black plays bishop e7, takes, takes, queen e2. Just getting the pieces out for both sides. Knight g to f6. Rook d1, queen c7. And this move is a blunder for actually two different moves for white. Can you find one of the moves, or both? The two moves that win for white are bishop takes f7, bishop takes f7, and knight to g5. Bishop f7 is slightly better, although in the game Fisher chose to play knight g5. If bishop takes f7, king takes f7, queen c4 is the next move. And... Uh, if you play the move king to g6, then clearly things are not too good for black, considering after knight h4, king h5, knight f5, his king is on the side of the board, and it's on, and it's on the fifth rank. So white, black will clearly be mated in a few moves. However, after the move queen to c4, black has two other options. If he plays king to e8, then the problem for him in this position is knight g5. And now, after the move, there are two threats for white, queen f7 and knight e6. Queen f7 is clearly a more serious threat, since if you just attack the knight, or play h5 instead, queen f7, king d8, knight e6 is checkmate. And if you try to play rook f8 to stop that, the easiest for white is to play knight e6, queen b6, and then just take this free pawn. And now black's king is in the middle of the board, white has very active pieces, and for, and for that matter, white is only technically down a pawn. So things are really good for white. However, Fisher chose to play the move knight to g5 instead of bishop f7. And this move is still winning, although perhaps not as much so as bishop f7. Knight g5 is played, double attacking the f7 pawn. And the best move for, for black is actually to just play a move like knight c5, giving away this pawn. But fine naturally didn't want that to happen, so instead he chose to castle. And now white has another tactic. Can you find it? That tactic that white played is bishop takes f7. Now if rook takes, then queen to c4, double attacks this rook. And this time there's no way of protecting it. After any move from white, after any move from black, white will take this rook and he will be completely winning. And of course, if you play a move like king h8, things are not too good for black, considering that after knight e6, queen b6, white can win an exchange on top of all that he's already won. Because of this, after the move bishop takes f7, black resigned on move 10. This fifth game was played between Richard Reddy and Savielli Tartakower. Reddy is, is famous for the move one knight f3, which is known as the Reddy opening. So the game started like this. e4, c5, 
d4, d5, knight c3, takes, takes, knight f6. This is a, a popular variation of the Karol Khan. Queen d3, e5, takes, queen a5, bishop d2, queen takes e5. So earlier, black gave up a pawn by playing e5, but he used a fork to win it back. White castled queenside now. He has, these, he has the rook and queen lined up on this diagonal, on this file, and you may notice that it looks like he's hanging a knight. But he has an idea in mind. If queen takes e4, then of course the move rook e1 is winning for white, since the queen is pinned and he'll have to give it up. But what about knight takes e4? That's what happened in the game, and can you find the tactic for white? The move for white in this position is to play queen d8 check, and this move actually forces mate in two from here. After the move king takes d8, you'll notice that this rook and bishop are lined up perfectly to do a double check on g5. Black has two legal moves. Since it's a double check, the only way to escape is to move the king. In the game, he played king to c7, which allows the checkmate and bishop to d8 checkmate. If king to e8 was played instead, then rook d8 instead would be mate. The game ended up by playing king c7, bishop d8 mate, in 11 moves. The sixth game was played between Paul Morphy and Alexander Meek. The game started off with Morphy as white, and the, it began with d e4, e6, d4, c5, d5, e5. So this is a pretty strange move from black, and white already has some advantage in this position. Morphy, being the attacking player that he is, played f4, hoping to gain an advantage in the center. Meek played d6, not willing to, not willing to take the bait. Knight f3, bishop g4, f takes, bishop takes, queen takes, pawn takes. And now white has a pretty big advantage here, and that's just because he has a strong pawn here. Soon he'll have very active pieces, He's ahead in development, and his king is likely to be safer in the long run. White played bishop b5, knight d7, knight, knight c3. Now knight f6 is played, bishop g5, and he plays bishop e7, trying to break the pin. But this natural looking move is completely losing. Black was already worse before, but now Morphe has a crushing tactic that'll win on the spot. Can you find it? Pause the video if you need more time. I'll be showing the move right now. The move that Morphe played is d6. And at first glance, it just looks like this move hangs a pawn. But when you look at the position further, you'll realize that it wins. If bishop takes d6, like happened in the game, white can just castle. And at this point, black actually just resigned, seeing what would happen to him. If the move like bishop to e7 is played, then white can play the move bishop f6. And you'll notice that this knight is being double attacked. Of course the knight cannot recapture since it's pinned to the king. And if the bishop takes, then white can take on d7 with either piece. And he's winning. If instead bishop f8 is played, which is a worse move, white can play the move knight to d5. And now the idea is that he's threatening to play knight c7. And if, if black just does nothing, then knight to c7 wins the queen. It wins the queen because the king has no other legal squares to move to. So in this position, what black should just do is just give away his queen. But if he tries anything else to protect the square, such as, for example, rook c8, what, black, what white should just do is he should just castle. He should wait to get his rooks into the game, and eventually he can deliver a crushing blow with a combination of knight takes f6 and d7. But as I said before, Meek instead resigned after 12 castles, which was a 12 move win for Morphe. Games number 7 and 8 are two Morphe miniatures, and this first one was played against Henry Edward Bird. Morphe had white, and he began the game with e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, so the classical French. d takes e4 was played, which is a not a very popular move. Two more popular and likely better alternatives are knight to f6 and bishop to b4. d takes e4, knight e4, knight f6, takes, takes, knight f3. 
knight c6 was played, and bishop g5. So white wants to kick around the queen a bit. So queen to f5, bishop d3 is played. And now what black should do is he should play something like queen to d5 or queen to a5, getting his queen out of danger before it's too late. But instead he played queen g4, and white can use a cool queen trapping motif to win the game on the spot. Can you find it? Pause the video if you need more time. The move that white played in this position is h3. And of course this move attacks the queen, but you'll notice that the queen still has two other squares it can go to. Queen h5 and queen takes g2. If queen takes g2 like happened in the game, white played rook h2. And now the queen is completely out of squares. The knight covers g1 and h5. The king covers f1, the rook covers h, h3 and, the, and h1, and the pawn covers g4. Instead, if the move queen h5 is played, then white can play the move g4. And now the bishop covers g6, the other bishop covers h6, and the pawn covers g4, and the knight covers g5 and h4. In the game, after the move queen takes g2, Rook h2 was played. Now, black continued on for a few more moves before white got to use another tactic. After knight takes h2, knight d4 was played. And can you find white's final tactic that prompted black to resign? This tactic was bishop to b5 check. And at first, this move just seemed like it loses a bishop, right? Because knight takes b5. But if this had happened in the game, white could play queen d8 checkmate which is a pretty cool way to end the game. Of course, if some other move is played like c6, queen takes d4, and now after a move like bishop to d7, then white is already completely winning because he's up a queen, and not to mention, he's up a queen for a rook, and not to mention an extra knight. Because of this, black resigned after the move bishop b5, marking a 12 move game. Game number eight is another Steinitz miniature this time against an unnamed player. Steinitz started with e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6, f4. So this is the Vienna game. e takes f4 was played, knight f3, bishop b4, knight d5, bishop a5, knight takes f4, d6, and c3. So now Morphy has broken, or not Morphy, sorry, Steinitz has broken this pin, and now he's planning to play d4 next move. Bishop g4 was black's choice, and after bishop b5, he played a rather inexplicable move, king f8, which doesn't really make that all that much sense. Instead, he should have played a move like knight f6. But after the move king f8, white chose to castle, getting this rook along this line. And now, uh, black played the blunder knight e5. White has a pretty cool checkmating idea after this, and can you find it? The move that white chose to play here is knight takes e5, and this move completely wins. If black takes the seemingly free queen, then in the game white played the move knight e to g6, and the only legal moves for black are to take with the f-pawn or the h-pawn. But regardless of the move, in the game he took with the f-pawn, knight takes g6 is going to be checked. Instead, what if black chose not to, take the, not to take the queen? If he played d takes e5, then queen takes g4, e takes f4, and a move like d4, or even just queen takes f4, simpler. Now white is going to be winning because he's got these, this queen and rook, he has an extra central pawn, he has the bishop pair, and a far safer king. So after a move like queen f6, white, white can just allow the queen trade. And after, after this, he has a big center, black has lots of weaknesses, and better pieces. So white is obviously going to win the game soon. This ninth game was played between Harry Nelson Pillsbury, who was a very strong player in the late 1800s and early 1900s, against someone named Fernandez. Pillsbury had white, and the game begun like this. e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6, f4, so another Vienna game. d6 was played in this, this time, 
and after knight f3, a6, bishop c4, bishop g4, f takes e5. Uh, what black should do in this position is just take back with the d-pawn, after which white will probably castle or continue developing. But instead of playing the best move, he played the move knight takes e5. And this allows white to continue with a spectacular checkmate, which you may have seen before from a different pattern. I'll give you a moment to find it. The move that white chose to play is knight takes e5. And this move wins at least a piece and potentially even the whole game. In the game, Fernandez played bishop takes d1. And it looks like he's winning the queen, but after bishop takes f7, king e7, knight d5, white gets a checkmate very similar to Legal's mate. And if you have never seen Legal's mate before, this is how it normally occurs. It goes with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, d6, knight c3, bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, knight takes e5, bishop d1, bishop f7, king e7, knight d5. And this position, if you look at this, if you look at the game position, is very similar. However, in the game, instead instead of instead of taking the queen, black could have also tried to take the knight back. But after the move queen takes g4, taking the free bishop, white is completely winning. Since he's up a bishop, he also has a much safer king, and he's ahead in development. This move, after knight takes d5, marked the end of a nine move game, which is one of the shortest miniatures in chess. Game number 10 was played between Albert Paul Vermacher against Jose Raul Capablanca, who is one of the greatest players of all time. Capablanca had black in this game, and it went like this. e4, e5, f4, bishop c5, knight f3, d6, c3, bishop g4. So this is a king's gambit, and instead of accepting, Capablanca chose to decline it. f takes e5, g takes e5, queen a4, knight d7. So he's simply blocking the check, and it looks like he's going to hang this pawn, which is true. Capablanca chooses to sacrifice this pawn, but instead of doing anything about it, he just continues developing. White played the move d4, and after castles, if d takes e5, then knight e5 wins the piece back. But instead, white played the move bishop to g5, and now, white has a, and now black has a cool tactic to completely end the game on the spot. It has a similar theme to our last two tactics, so I'll give you a moment to find it. The tactic that black chose to use here is knight takes e5. And now, if d takes e5, knight takes e4. And in this position, white resigned on move 10. The reason is because if bishop takes d8, winning the seemingly free queen yet again, bishop f2 is a checkmate in 1. Instead, if black chose to play queen takes d e4, black has a different checkmate, queen to d1 mate. So, after this position, after knight takes e4, black, does, black doesn't really have any options. The best move is to play bishop to e3, but after bishop takes e3, white has, black has so many checkmating threats that it's probably worth it to just resign by now. Instead, if we go back to this position, what if black played a move like knight takes d7? In this position, black should, black should just play bishop takes d7, and after queen c4, he can save his piece. Or not by bishop b6, not by bishop d6. It's better to just play a move like, for example, rook to e8. And the idea is that you're getting on the same line as the king, and you can play like this. So, as I mentioned earlier, instead of this, Paul Vermacher fell for the trap, and after knight e4, he resigned. Game 11 was played between Mikhail Tal. He's one of the greatest attacking players of all time, against Raphael Vaganian, who is also a GM. Tal started with e4, e6, d4, d5, knight d2. So this is the Tarash variation of the French, and the main line here goes c5. But black did not play that, he instead played knight to c6. Knight gf3 was chosen by white, knight f6, e5, 
knight d7. White played the move knight to b3, and f6. And at first, f if you're not a French player, f6 would seem like a weakness, since now white has ideas of queen h5 and getting on this weak diagonal. But f5 is actually a common theme in openings like these, where you try to break away at white's strong center. White played bishop b5, and after f takes e5, d takes e5, first note that the pawn is not hanging. After either knight capture, knight takes e5, and now this knight is pinned. So instead, he played the move knight to c5. Now, white chose to play bishop g, or sorry, not bishop g5, knight to g5. And the idea of this is to attack this square that was once occupied by the f pawn, but is now vacant. Tall being an attacking player, he of course wants to checkmate his opponent out of the opening. Black plays bishop to d7, and after bishop takes c6, which was Tal's choice, uh, black played b takes c6. And the reason behind his move is because if bishop takes c6, he didn't want to end up losing this pawn potentially after a move like knight, bishop knight c5, bishop c5, knight e6. Black wanted to avoid that, so instead he took with the pawn. But this allows white to end with a really cool checkmate, and I'll, and I'll show you in a minute. In the meantime, pause the video and try to find it. The move that Tal played here is queen to h5 check. And this is actually going to either win a lot of material or checkmate the black king in just a few moves. Obviously, if king to f7, king to e7, queen f7 is checkmate. So instead, g6 is forced. And after queen f3, which was Tal's next move, aiming on the f file, black chose to resign. Of course, this move threatens checkmate on f7, so black will have to do something to stop that. And at first, it may seem like the choice is clear. He should play something like queen e7. But after knight takes e5, you'll quickly realize that the queen is now the one that's protecting it. So the queen is, in other words, overworked. It has to protect two separate threats. If queen takes e5, then queen f7, king d8, queen f6 will win the rook. And because of all these threats, as I said earlier, black resigned after the move queen f3. The final game of these 12 was played by Giacchino, Giacchino Greco, who was a very, a very strong player during the 1600s. He's playing against an unnamed player. Greco started with e4, e6, d4, knight f6, bishop d3, knight c6. So black is playing a very strange version of the French defense. If you play the French, you'll know that the main move is d5, and there's lots of theory after this. But knight f6 is not losing in itself, nor is knight c6. And knight f3, bishop e7, white played the slightly dubious move h4, relinquishing whatever small advantage he had. However, Greco is playing to mate out of the opening, so his choice is understandable. What black should do is play a move like d6, simply trying to get this bishop out. And although his position is passive, white ha does have this small weakness on h4. However, black played the extremely natural move, castles, a move that many of us might play in a blitz game. But now white is completely winning. He uses a very common motif here, and pause the video if you need more time to find it out. The move that white played is e5. And you'll notice that this opens up the bishop. So after the move knight d5, white can use a, a sacrifice often referred to as the Greek gift. The move that white played is bishop takes h7. If king takes h7, like occurred in the game, white plays the move knight to g5. Now his idea is he's got this queen and this h7 square, which he's trying to attack. Black has several options here, and first I'll go over the game continuation. He played bishop takes g5 in the game, and after h takes g5, black has a few options. If king g6, then queen h5 will force mate in a couple of moves. King f5, queen h3. If king e4, then queen d3 is mate. And if king g6, then queen h7 is mate. So king g6 was not the choice in the game. Instead, he played king g8. 
But from here, after queen h5, threatening queen h7 and queen h8 mate both, black played the move f5, and after g6, taking away the king's only escape square, rook e8, and queen h8 checkmate. However, black had some alternatives instead of allowing this checkmate. The first and clearest alternative is to play king h8 in this position rather than taking the bishop. From here, white should play the move knight g5, preparing to play queen h5. And after a move like g6, h5 is opening up this file, and white is obviously doing much better and should be mating the black king in a couple of moves. But was there anything that black could do after bishop takes h7, and king takes h7? Well, after the move knight g5, he had better options than to recapture. If king to, if king to h6, the easiest way for white to win is just to play knight e6. Note, it's a discovered check. And after a move like knight f4, you can just take the free queen. Another option in this position was to just play a move like king g6, which is actually the best move, although white is obviously still completely winning. White can play the move queen to d3 check, and after f5, e takes f6, king f6, queen h3, king h6. The easiest way for white to win from this point is to play h5, king h6, and to just play the simple move knight to f7. And after king, king h7, queen d3, king g8, white is up a queen. So always be on the lookout for Greek gift sacrifices like this. And the way that you can recognize a Greek gift is when you have a bishop on d3 and there's no knight on f6 to protect the h7 pawn. Make sure that these moves are also available when you try a Greek gift in your own games. Those are my 12 games for today. I hope you enjoyed them and learned something, and I'll see you all next time.